Uh, I think I'm ready for questions now. Yeah. Time to play Stump the Trump. Can you hear me okay, David? Yes. All right. We do have a bunch of questions. Um, the first one I have um, is regarding the Galanthus. The, <laughs> the viewer says that um, they seem to be more common in England than here in the Midwest United States. And there's several varieties that she's been trying to purchase that are only available in England and won't be shipped here. Why is it, since we have a favorable climate for them, she can't get that wide range of varieties? Well, they're Cydnes protected because they were all raped and pillaged from um, Turkey, that area of the world. So they are, they are protected plants. Um, from, to the, a lot of the, uh, the Dutch would just take the bulk plants. So they had to protect them because they were declining in numbers. Now, all contrary, I have flown to, I don't consider myself an Anglophile, but my passport says that I am. I, I've been there 27 times. I go over every winter. I do have a CITES permit to bring these in. Uh, I put out a Galantis list. I grow 250 different cultivars of Galantis in my garden. I've organized the Galantis Gala here in Downingtown. Before COVID, the last, before we had to go into hiding, we had 400 people come from all the states on the East Coast. And they were all here. We had Galantis vendors. So they are here. And there are lists that come out. Look, uh, we advertise on the webpage, Galantis Gala. Uh, we'll announce a new one, usually in March. We have other, as I said, we have multiple vendors. It's kickoff of the, the garden, you see. So, yes, we do have them. I like the, like the little puppy going up the steps. Is Ella? You just have to ask that. You just have to maybe stretch a little bit and look for them a little bit harder. They're here. And then um, our next question is about hellebores. Um, how long do they... My two favorites. <laughs> What's that? My two favorites. Two Go favorites. Ahead. Um, they're asking, how long do they last? And do you have to replant or do they last forever? Um, their hellebores didn't okay. come back this year. They're planted under some trees in the shade and they leave their leaves covering them for the winter. And they're wondering what they should be doing. What zone do you guys... Are you, you're in zone four or five? I would We're think a five, six ish, depending on what oh, part of the that, state. That's fine. I've had hellebores in the garden, same plant for 20 plus years. I only divide it if I want to, or maybe to share a piece. They're very, very long lived. One hint I will give you is I cut all the old leaves off in the winter time. So they don't detract from the foliage. Um, they are obviously one of my favorite plants. Um, Brandywine hellebores all come from right here at the cottage, gathered by these two hands, um, and pollinated. I dislike them because the deer don't eat them because they last so very long, and the colors are so, so different. And I like the different colors that hellebores in our garden at that time of the year. So I had another question on hellebores asking, uh, how and when do you divide them? Well, the truth is I have divided them kind of pragmatic. The best time to do it is when you're thinking about it, but the optimal time is in late summer because hellebores set their blooms in the summer. And if you divide it in late summer, the chances that you'll have a bloom the next spring are greater. Uh, I often insist that you have both old root and new root on the division and more than one leaf because the two leaves keep a balance. One leaf is more like a sail. It will pull it out of the ground. Um, the correct answer is to late summer. And then I also had somebody asking about the tall, dark brown, blacky, strappy plant that is in a lot of your pictures. Um, I think tall, all oh, other formings, which I drag in and out of my garage, uh, like I do my chameleons. You know, I, a friend said, Dave, you know, you would stand your mother in the garden. Well, 
maybe prove it to my design purposes, but that for several years now, I've been, those are my babies that I pull them in and out because again, it gives me a vertical, a strong vertical in that border, as well as the color purple, which I often repeat everywhere in the garden. Even in the meadow now, uh, Pinson and Pocahontas, with the purple leaves is there. My purple English oak, uh, it's a color there that I repeat very often, as well as chartreuse and blue. Repetition, repetition, repetition. So do those plants, do you plant them in the ground or are they in a pot? No, I, I have them in pots. Okay. And then I have another question too, asking how do you tag and identify each of your plants? You have so many. Beg your pardon? How do you tag and identify each of your plants? Well, I don't garden? tag anything except the snowdrops because it, there's so many of them and the differences are so minute. I haven't tagged my snowdrops. But other than that, I put more like I'm creating a piece of art. The tags, I remove them as soon as I learn the plant. It's more about the vision of what I'm seeing other than, you know, a, a botanic garden. In the wintertime, it tends to look, look like a mouse graveyard. You have the, the, the labels. But I'm kind of blessed with I'm a visual learner. I can walk in my, I can about name every plant in my garden and I can walk in the garden and I, I can say, oh, it's over in your right hand corner. Just the way I look at my, my mind works. It's very visual and I think I'm fortunate to capture it that way. That's why I like garden design. I, I can carry that through. No, I don't label. When I'm gone, it's gone. We had a the Smithsonian and one of the garden clubs when they wrote the article, they tried to put every cultivar in it. Most people stopped counting around 3,000. Um, but if I told you every plant that was here, would I have told you about the garden? I don't think so. It's like you have to be in it to appreciate it. A list of plants, to me, is not the, the most important. However, to that, I will say I enjoy how people use plants and the kind of plants they use. You can tell a lot about a gardener by the plants that they grow in their garden. Okay, and that's important too, how wide their vocabulary is. But again, I like going on tours and see how people use plants. I mean, you can get someone a salvia main eye, and they, everyone will use it a different way. I find that intriguing. I, I digress, I'm sorry. No, not at all. Um, you, you said you don't spray for, for anything. How do you control anything. pests like animals and bugs? I try to create a natural balance. I try to keep, you know, I noticed the aphids will be eaten by the ladybugs. The ladybugs will be eaten by the birds. Uh, I don't get really, like I said, I may have a few chewed leaves, uh, but I, I count that as a badge of honor because I'm working with nature. Um, if it becomes really bad, I'll cut it down or like with the roses. If some of them got particularly prone to black spot, I'm sorry, you're out of here. There's someone else who wanting to take your place. Um, I just try to find more resistant varieties. And if we wanted to come see your cottage, is that something that you said that you do some tours. Is that something that the we public do? I have eight on the calendar this month, eight next month. Um, I mean, when I one of the first lessons I learned from Hardy Plant Society has been with me ever since I was I was on the planning committee for the society. Is the most important thing is sharing, the sharing. You know, and that's about gardeners in general. How I found that the worldwide gardeners are generally very sharing people. That's the most important thing that you do with your garden. Otherwise, it's kind of selfish to share. That's how I look at it. People come and say, oh, it's beautiful. I want to do it. That's good. If they go away and say, I can do better, and they still garden, I've won on both accounts. Your garden, that's the most important thing, to encourage other people to garden. Uh, tours contact 
Um, I have a website, my Brandy Wine Cottage or David L. Call. And my assistant will organize a date for a tour group of Ken and, Ken and more. And we had another question about your black walnut trees. Do they drop walnuts? And if so, oh, how do you manage yes, those? Do. do you want to wear a helmet in the garden around that time? <laughs> okay. Um, again, by trial and error, I've learned what will grow under them. I think the border, you can't even see the ground under, I am you know, I have hellebores, I have pasta, I have um, lily of the valley, there's a lot of uh, fuga. There's a, a, a long list of plants that will grow under them. And I just, you know, pick them up, set a bucket up, and, and instead of playing cornhole or something like that, I have a, a walnut tossed into the bucket. <laughs> just make a game out of it. Just like deer spray. You, you have to approach it as a kind of a, a game. Um, I did have somebody asking about the deer. Um, what kind of repellent do you use? Um, in your well, body? you know, we should ask these companies to underwrite us because I've said it in every lecture. I use deer stopper because I grow so much in the liliaceae, tulips, trillium, and I don't fence because I, I may at some time, but I, it seems like I, I'm i not I'm just putting my problem on my neighbors if I fence. But you do have to protect your investment. So I use deer stopper. I order three bottles at a time. Because right now I'm spraying almost every night. And I used to think that was a pain in the place where you sit. But now I look at it as my evening walk. And I use a bottle that I can just hold in one hand. And deer stopper because it smells like cinnamon, not like rotten eggs. So it makes it all easier. From time to time, I'm, I will ch change to a different one. My, I'll use, um, you know, Bob X, something like that, and to change the scent, making the deer think that there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking. You know, okay, we've he's not for, there's not a new lion in this garden. You know, you get used to it. You do change it from time to time. But my go-to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we he's not, for, there's not a new lion in this garden, you know. You get used to it. You do change it from time to time. But my go-to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking. You know, okay, we've he's not for there's not a new lion in this garden. You know, you get used to it. You do change it from time to time. But my go to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there, is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we've, he's not, for, there's not a new lion in this garden, you know. You get used to it. You do change it from time to time. But my go-to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we've, he's not, for, there's not a new lion in this garden, you know, you get used to it. You do change it from time to time, but my go-to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we've, he's not, for, there's not a new lion in this garden, you know, you get used to it. You do change it from time to time, but my go-to is deer supper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we've, he's not, for, there's not a new lion in this garden, you know. 
just get used to it. You do change it from time to time. But my go-to is deer stopper. And then I have a person, they have a, a new construction home with no landscaping. Where okay. should they start to get that layered look that you have? That there is a new predator in the area. Otherwise, they think you're joking, you know. Okay, we've, he's not, there's not a new lion in this garden. 